Welcome back to Ring of Fire. I'm Farron Cousins here with attorney Peter Mouget. Um, you know, the island of Puerto Rico has obviously been through quite a bit just in the last year and a half with Hurricane Maria. Um, but there's actually been a bigger crisis happening in Puerto Rico for a lot longer than just the hurricane. And that is the financial crisis. Big banks have come down to Puerto Rico. This began years ago, preying on the people on that island. But last week, uh, Peter Mouget, who's with me right now, actually secured a major victory against UBS on behalf of citizens in Puerto Rico. So Peter, um, start by telling us what this particular case against UBS, uh, what was this all about? It's an individual investor, a uh, great, great guy, uh, grew up, born in Puerto Rico, grew up in New York and then moved home and did just a perfect American story. Saved, made money, good businessman, put together a really significant uh, net worth took his money to uh, UBS and uh, based on their recommendations, its investment strategy, he lost about $15 million. And we took the case to an arbitration panel in front of FINRA and the verdict came out last week and it's a total of about 19 million and some change, almost $20 million, 100% of the losses, plus his attorney's fees, plus his costs. So he pretty much gets to take all of his losses and put them back in his pocket like none of this had ever happened. And what's great about this, you know, obviously it's not because, oh, his investments didn't do well. This guy was lied to by the bank. You know, they, they absolutely took advantage of him as they've done multiple people in Puerto Rico here on the mainland United States. And so the, it's a business model, right? I mean, it, the business model was to put their interests first ahead of their own clients, push their clients to the back. We're going to take care of us. We're going to take care of our bottom line, take care of our bonus pool and our clients come second. And this, this, this arbitration panel, three weeks of, uh, of, of hearings over several hundred exhibits. And they said, oh, you're going to pay this guy back. What y'all did was wrong. And, and what they do is they go down there and they sell these trash bonds. They, they invite investors like, oh, here, we, we have this great investment for you. This is going to do really well. But the bank knows this is a losing investment, except for, for them, the bank itself, they can make oh. money selling these trash you're ex- uh, investments. You're exactly the- right. It, that's the business model. The business model is we're going to act as a consultant or an advisor. We're going to come in with our investment banking team. We're going to help structure all this together. And it looks and uh, it looks like a safe bond. They tell you it's a safe bond, but it's a house of cards and they know it is and it got bigger and bigger. So if you look at the line of all of these deals that UBS helped pitch, by the time we got to 2013, they were at $72 billion worth of debt. But here's the really, the part that, that, uh, that gets you fired up. They would take these bonds that they underwrote knowing they couldn't sell them. The only place they could sell them was to island residents and they stuffed them inside of their own proprietary closed end funds and sold them to their own clients under the, the uh, safe preservation of capital. So here's our guy, almost retired, right at the end. And uh, they, they load his portfolio with this stuff and they wind their pockets every step of the way from a consultant to putting it in the funds. They manage the funds, so they made a percentage. Then the financial advisor charges a commission for selling the funds. So they made billions of dollars and then left their clients holding the bag with, the, uh, with these bonds. And this is, you know, again, it's not unique to Puerto Rico, the, no. these big banks coming down, they're doing this, but it's been exceptionally bad yeah. in Puerto Rico. They, they almost look at this as a wild west type area where they can just operate, do whatever they want without any kind of oversight. So yeah, I mean, how, how bad is it? Because, you know, it's great that you got this verdict for this client. You've secured other verdicts in the past as this well. This is our seventh investor. We've tried tried uh, three cases to verdict and received similar results. And, and so there's still, you know, a lot of work to be done down there, there isn't is. there? There, mean, there is. There's a, there, uh, there were as many cases filed this year in 2018 as there were in 2014. So it's Santander, it's Oriental, it's Merrill, it's UBS, very similar business models. UBS had the biggest market share. So there's more cases against UBS but it's a, uh, people are filing cases. There's cases getting tried. I think at this point, there's about 30 to 40 different cases that have, uh, have been tried in Puerto Rico and, uh, they've been good results overall, but our, our cases that we've tried with R and seven investors have all recovered attorney's fees, all recovered, uh, their costs. 
and been able to put either all or almost all of their losses back in their pocket. So why are the banks particularly preying on Puerto Rico? What, what's so attractive about this to them? It was the Puerto Rico was in a tight financial predicament and these banks came in and were vulnerable looking for solutions to try to fix some of the financial predicament. The, the borrowing more money, paying more interest, it's essentially like if you send a kid to, to college, they put money on a credit card, they put more money on a credit card, the interest rates, and it just snowballs, which is exactly what happened in Puerto Rico. And, uh, and they just kept selling it to their clients under safe preservation of capital. There is an act in, uh, in Puerto Rico, the 1940 Act, that doesn't apply, that applies in the mainland which would prevent these affiliated transactions, meaning they couldn't underwrite them and then stuff them into their, into their funds. However, in Puerto Rico, they owe clients a fiduciary duty, which is the highest duty in the law, meaning the clients have to be put first. You can't, you can't uh, act as all these consultants, make two billions in, in fees, know there's problems, and then stuff them into your client's account, which violates a fiduciary duty. So either way, they, they have a problem, but they just took advantage of... Uh, of a population of their own clients and underwrote, stuffed them in the funds and then sold them all, I mean, for years to the point, and this is the travesty, to the point where their client base was so concentrated in these funds, in these bonds, and you only can sell the Puerto Ricans. So if you can't, you can't tell one person to sell because they don't have anybody to sell to. So one of their branch managers testified that it was like being in a movie theater and yelling fire and you have two small exits. Only some of the people are gonna get out. That's exactly what happened when it got so bad, people tried to get out, a few people got out, but for the most part, everybody was stuck inside. So, so the, the investors, everybody like that, they're left holding oh, the bag. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and, and the banks, they made their money, and now, luckily, you know, thanks to the trial lawyers like yourself, uh, uh, Paige. The UBS got out. Yeah. They were the first ones out the door. <laughs> Unbelievable, but you know, this also helps explain why this Hurricane Maria coming in has been so devastating. The, yeah, the island, island has been starved of money and it's not because of necessarily mismanagement on the island, it's because of these predatory banks coming in, taking the money, screwing over investors and everybody basically that the banks could get their hands on. But listen, we're out of time for today. Peter, great job, you and your team on this Thank verdict. You. Thank you for being out there and fighting and, and keep it up, please. Well, thanks for having me.